Hi. As you remember from the last clip, we discussed a measurement performed by two experimentalists, Alice and Bob, in which you had at the beginning of the experiment some particle that breaks up into two particles. One is going to the right and one is going to the left. At the beginning, the spin was equal zero. And the sum of the spin of the two particles has to be zero, but each of them is a spin half particle. In this clip, we'll lay down the groundwork, the mathematical groundwork, in order to calculate the correlations between the measurements of the two experimentalists, Alice and Bob, and see how it compares with, with the classical results which we have obtained in the previous uh, clip. So we have Alice and Bob. Now, since we are dealing with quantum mechanics, we have wave functions of the particles. So let's say one of the particles is going in the direction of, Al of uh, Alice. And we'll denote it as the particle that goes to Alice with the letter A. And that could be in spin up or spin down. Same for Bob. He has a particle with a spin up or down, both of them measured in the z direction. And now what do we know? Since the original spin was equal zero, the combination must be zero. Therefore, if Alice has a particle with spin up, Bob has one with spin down, and vice versa. OK, as in the previous clip, Alice and Bob perform at random one of two measurements. OK, so for Alice, let's assume that she measures either in the, x in the z axis or in the x axis. And since any measurement in quantum mechanics, as you already know, is an operator, she can measure the operator sigma z in th or sigma x. And both of them I denote with an a, just to remind me that that's Alice measurement. That corresponds to the two directions that we have mentioned in the previous clip, A0 and A1. Bob chooses two different uh, measurement directions. Let's assume just something that is in 45 degrees to Alice's measurement and therefore is written as a combination of sigma x and sigma z and we denote it with b because that's the measurement that bob performs OK, so to conclude, both of them measure the direction of the spin, but in different directions. Alice in z and x, and Bob in z uh, in minus z minus x. 
and plus x minus z. And to be more precise, I write it in that way. OK, the, uh, the directions that we have chosen are, of course, random. Could have chosen any other direction. It's the angle is also not important as long as it's different than the measurement of Alice. But 45 degrees is convenient for the calculation. OK, so now you s stop for a minute and ask yourself the following question. We have actually here two particles. I have to write down a wave function of these two particles. We didn't learn how to write wave functions of more than one particle. But that's no problem at all because in this case, these two particles are, we can exactly know to which particle we refer because Alice measures the one of the particles that goes in her direction while Bob is measuring the particle that goes in his direction. Therefore, there's no confusion between the particles. They are not ident identical particles in the meaning that they are not undistinguishable. They can be distinguished. So in this case, it's very easy to write down the wave function. The wave function is simply the combination of both possibilities. So 1 over square root 2 for normalization. Either Alice's particle is up and Bob's is down or vice versa. OK, now you can stop me a minute and ask, why is there a minus here? Why isn't it a plus? That has reasons that has to do with the symmetry of the solution. You will study it once you study angular momentum at the moment, except that this is a minus. OK, how do I write down the operators in this language? OK, so I take For example, Alice's measurement along the z direction and this is the operator. Alice's operator operates only on the particles that goes in her direction. Therefore, you have here only wave functions uh, corresponding to A. And this is an operator because if we multiply it by a vector, we'll end up with a vector. The same thing for the x direction. So, we obtain the following operator and Look on the difference between the two operators. The operator on in the z-direction 
if we start with a wave function in the z direction, we get the same wave function. If we start with a down uh, uh, wave function, we end up with minus this, uh, this wave function. For sigma x, on the other hand, if we start with an up direction, we end up with a down and vice versa meaning that sigma x actually flips the wave function. Okay, let's see for uh, illustration a particular calculation of this uh, using these operators and wave functions. And to simplify it, I'll take only one part of the wave function and calculate its expectation value. So, if I'm writing down this part of the wave function, and I'm writing down the operator sigma z. What do I expect to get? Of course, in this case, the particle A has a spin of minus 1, and I expect to get as an expectation value minus 1. Okay, let's perform the calculation. So I'm copying the wave function. I'm explicitly writing the operator now. And closing up with the second wave function. So how do I perform the calculation? Let's note sig the wave function of B appears only here and here. Nothing else that depends on them appear in the middle. Therefore, they multiply each other. The scalar multiplication is simply 1. If I'm looking on the first term, here we have spin down, spin up. So the result of the scalar multiplication is 0. Here I have spin down, spin down gives me 1 times spin a spin a gives me minus 1, so the result that I get is minus 1 as expected. Okay, so now we know actually to perform any calculations that we're interested in the, in the observation of Alice and Bob and the correlation between them, and this we will continue in the next clip. So, uh, see you then.